So if you guys remember, I did an actual video on the original God of War director. His name is David Scott Jaff. And he what what he basically said before, which was just completely insane, he is now trying to double down and essentially try to push more BS politics into his, you know, little Twitter people that follow him, where now he's talking about the game Forspoken. Now, I didn't make a video about Forspoken because I just I I I didn't see the point, honestly, because I, I was initially interested in it. I thought it was going to be a good game, but I'm seeing a lot of videos come out about the dialogue in the game and how terrible it is. And when I watched it, it is just so unbelievably cringe that if that's just a portion of the game, I can only imagine how terrible the rest of the game is. I will still probably pick it up when it goes on super sale, but I'm not going to pay full price for it. I just absolutely refu uh, refuse. But now, of course, uh, David Scott Jaff has just come out and done what he always does. And he talks about identity politics and the reason why people don't like a game that just happens to have a black person in the lead or a female person in the lead. Anytime something like that happens and he has an opportunity to virtue signal to women that will never sleep with him, he's going to do it and he's done it now. So now he just recently said that he is a uh, panning. Uh, people who are panning uh, for Spoken are driven by a-holes who clearly don't like women, black people or PlayStation. So we just we got all three things going on right now. So let's get into the article, guys. This one comes from some good old bounding into comics and it says original God of War director J David Scott Jab says widespread panning of Forspoken is driven by a-holes who clearly don't like women, black people, or PlayStation. In his latest embarrassing attempt at signaling his virtue to his fellow adherents of critical identity theory, original God of War director David Scott Jab has declared that he will be buying Square Enix's widely panned Forspoken solely out of spite towards the a-holes who clearly don't like women, black people, or PlayStation that he believes are responsible for the game's poor reputation. So you mean to tell me that you are originally buying... you? You're buying the game out of spite, all right? So that tells me you didn't have a plan to actually purchase this game originally. So you talk all this crap about wanting to support black women or women in general, and now you're basically saying that, oh, if it wasn't for the drama, you probably wouldn't have bought the game in the first place. So what does that tell anybody, right? It tells me that you actually don't believe what you're saying. You're just, you saw the opportunity to take a virtue signal and you took it. It says, released by Square Enix on January 24th, where Spoken centers on the story of Frey, a young New York City native who, upon being transported to the magical world of Athia and discovering that she possesses the ability to wield magic, must team up with Sentient Cuff to free her new surroundings from the oppressive rule of a group known as Atantas in order to find her way home. Now, I think that this game is Square Enix's new attempt because they, they did a couple of uh, articles and interviews about this. This is their new attempt to trying to essentially shill uh, or pander to the Western audiences, right? So they're not really doing their JRPGs the way that they normally do. Uh, they're doing some video games to try to pander to the Western audience because they think that they can't survive without the Western audience. And I think that's ridiculous because the Western audience loves the original JRPGs. They love the way that they actually come out when they try to put their all into it like the Japanese companies normally do. We don't need you to pander to us. We don't need you to try to show us our ideologies. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, why is there a New York City girl in here? Like, there's no point. You know what I mean? Like, give me a fantasy game. You don't need to give me a game based in reality kind of a thing. Like, I know they think that that's what Western audiences want, but look at all these failed entertainment venues. There's no reason to think that that's the truth. But of course, they're going to think that because that's what the ESG scores tell them to do. It says, yet despite being developed by the team behind Final Fantasy XV and featuring a story penned by Gary Witta, Amy Hennig, Allison Reimer, and Todd Stashwick, Forspoken has managed to miss the mark by nearly every metric. And it's not just regular players who have been taken aback by the game's seventh console generation level graphics, unsatisfying combat, and Marvel Cinematic Universe on several different steroid style of dialogue, and even legacy media reviewers who couldn't delude themselves into enjoying the game's ironically detached personality. And that's the thing, too. You know, I noticed with the dialogue, it's just so Marvel. You know what I mean? I, I don't really know how else to explain it other than it's Marvel. You guys know exactly what I mean when I say something like that. It is Marvel jokes kind of level bad. It's like it's one of those things where they just obviously inserted jokes into a moment. They really didn't need it, but they felt like they had to do it. Otherwise, uh, someone was going to be upset that it wasn't there. I mean, I really don't know how to explain it other than that way. It says, per review aggregated Metacritic, the PlayStation 5 release of Forspoken currently holds an average score of 68 out of 100 across 66 reviews, with even such notoriously slanted sites such as GameSpot 
inverse, and even the gamer, unable to give the game more than a middling grade. It's not fun, it's not engaging, it looks terrible, summarized Forbes' Eric Kane of the game's poor reception, so yeah, sorry to burst your bubble, but a 68 out of 100 Metacritic score feels too high for this game. And I saw some gameplay of footage of this game, and the graphics really are bad. I mean, for a PS5 game, it's really terrible. When you look at something like Horizon, and you compare it to something like Forspoken, it's not even, it's not even comparable. It says, offering his two cents on the situation after taking notice of the negative attention the game was receiving in the days leading up to its launch, Jav took to his personal Twitter on January 23rd to opine, I have no strong opinion on Forspoken at the moment, played the demo, enjoyed it, but now looking to drop 70 bucks on it. Oh, interesting. That's so interesting. So you didn't see the value in this game until you had an opportunity to virtue signal and now you're spending your money on it. That's incredible to me. That's like, that's such an, that is, I, I can't even, I can't even take it serious because I'm so upset because that is just so obviously, obviously he's full of crap. Obviously he's full of crap. He knows that this game means nothing and it deserves everything that it's getting. But of course, because it's a black person in lead or because it's a black female in lead, suddenly now it has to mean something. And anybody who doesn't like it is just a bigot. It's insane. It says, anyway, the pile on has me thinking of this and how I've gotten older. I've realized there is no bad creative output, he added, like ever. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's true at all. In support of his argument, Jav shared a brief bit of gameplay footage from his previously developed Drawn to Death, explaining that though the game was my biggest failure critically and commercially and reviews said it was juvenile, and it probably was, its in-game announcer was one of my very favorite parts. But after encountering further negative criticism of Forspoken and ostensibly realizing that his somewhat favorable read of the game was an unpopular opinion, Jaff began to take the discourse personally. Finding himself at a breaking point, Jaff returned to Twitter later that evening to conversely declare, I'm inches from pulling the trigger on Forspoken at $70. Part of it is the good stuff I'm hearing from people who are playing it and the fact that I did enjoy the demo, he said. The other part is I want to buy it to spite the a-holes who clearly don't like women, black people, or PlayStation. It's incredible to me. These people these people are the same people that will tell you not to buy Hogwarts Legacy. They're the same people who would say, don't buy Hogwarts Legacy because you're supporting XYZ and if you do this, you're not really down for the cause. You're just, you're just a complete bigot. And yet he is literally trying to say that the only reason he is buying this game is because of people who supposedly don't like like it because it has a black female in it which is such a bs trope to take and honestly i don't even think it's square enix is taking that trope i don't think they're the kind of company that would take that kind of back road and say try to blame the fans sort of a thing i don't think they're that kind of people i think it's other people looking at this game who are saying that other like show media websites like cbr or even ign will probably say something like that or kotaku exactly would say something like that uh, but it's not Square Enix themselves. So whenever you see someone like this and try to shill and virtue signal, it's very obvious that he actually wasn't going to support this game in the first place, which makes this whole virtue signal even more hilarious to me. It says eventually forced to face the fact that the game was not just being rejected by his straw man perception of gamers, but also his ideological allies. Jaff attempted to save face by backpedaling. To be clear, the tropes about black folks in Forspoken are crap, and plus they were called out over a year ago and Square did nothing, which is their right, of course. But I'm talking about the players who are being uh, douchebags for no clear reason, so I assume it's racism plus console war plus misogyny. That's a lot of assumptions, man. Failing to win over anyone with his doubling down, Jaff would attempt to further disingenuously distance himself from his initial rhetoric by turning his nose upward and asserting, learn to read human beings. I said one of the reasons I'm buying for Spoken is to spite for, uh, people for whom they, being racist, uh, misogynist, console wars are motivating factors in slamming it. If someone plays and hates it for other reasons they can articulate, fine by me. He concluded that's fair. But the problem is, mo I would say like 95% of the reviews are probably that. They're probably people who actually played it, don't like it, and are articulating it the right way. But because it's something that goes against your virtue signal, you actually are not okay with it. So the entire, like whenever they say, oh, that's totally fine if you don't like it, you're full of crap. You're full of crap. It's obviously not fine if we don't like it, because if that's the case, you wouldn't be virtue signaling about it. You know what I mean? Like, these people really need to stop this whole nonsense. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, consider leaving me a subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video, comment, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hypnotic out.